and welcome back to the On The Slab Horror Show, the show that we bring to you each and every Friday night. Why we do this on a Friday night? Fans, you know exactly why we do it on a Friday night, because Friday night's horror night. And tonight we're joined by a legend of the genre who intently made name as one of the best hall monitors in horror history. Um, but this is Stunt Woman, Leslie Hoffman. How are you? I'm fine. How are you doing? Not too bad. Not too bad. Um, I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to come on. Oh, I'm glad to be here. Yep, I am. Um, I, I put my hall pass away. <laughs> or I guess I didn't have a pass. So, uh oh, I'm in trouble. I didn't have a pass. So, so does that mean we can run in the hallways? Well, now I'll tackle you if you don't have a pass. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. For those of you who don't recognize the reference, um, Leslie plays the hall monitor in what is my favorite horror movie of all time in Nightmare on Elm Street and has two of the best lines in the whole movie. Oh, it, it, it is amazing. When, when I meet with fans... They they say the three lines, which is, uh, where's your pass, screw your pass, and hey, Nancy, no running in the hallway. With the, with the... Right, <laughs> with the claws. Oh, I should have, yeah. I should have brought the claws with me. I would say at the time, working with legendary director Wes Craven on a movie like that, I don't think anyone would have expected their career to blow up like that. Oh, that... Yes, it, it is amazing. I think I timed the scene and it's like only 19 seconds long, but it's probably the most memorable scene uh, when I'm talking to people. Uh, you know, I'll ask them if they like horror or comedy, and when they say horror and I say original nightmare on elm street they know exact well then i then i i grab my hair and put it in ponytails and i go where's your pass and and they immediately know the scene it, it's it's a phenomenal scene really and uh, it became so iconic in it obviously you had the red and green jumper which was obviously the same well obviously not the same one but the, a replica of the one that that Robert England wears, and it, it just became synonymous with the movie, really. Right, and I don't, I, again for 19 seconds, I don't know why that one. Well, I have some idea uh, why that scene is uh, so memorable. I, uh, well, I think. Nancy running around the corner and bumping into me. No one is expecting her to run into somebody, but but I think the the part where Robert Englund's voice comes out of my mouth just freaks out people. I think it was so good because it was so subtly done. Uh, being a stunt woman. Uh, or stunt people don't usually get scripts, so I didn't have a script. Wes Craven came up to me and said, okay, I need you to say this. Uh, well, in, let me clarify this whole thing, is, is that it was cheaper to hire a stunt woman to say the line than to hire an actress to say the line and have me stunt double them. So that's why... I, I was both an actress and a stunt person because she pushes me to the floor. That makes sense. Um, and I mean, it's a, it, to be fair, even in the movie, it looks like a hefty collision coming around the corner. Oh, it's it's real. There's <laughs> there's nothing fake about uh, Heather, you know, pushing me to the floor. So so what you're telling us is she's the bully in this situation. Oh yeah, no. She she physically well, that's that's being a stunt woman is that uh I mean if someone's going to push you to the floor uh 
I mean, you let them. Uh, I don't even know if I, 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 well, I'm gonna presume that I was wearing uh, like a girdle or a pad on, on my derriere. <laughs> You gotta, but, you gotta protect. Uh, you gotta no. protect the goods. <laughs> but uh, no, she she pushed me to the floor. I mean, I guess that's that inspired me with my line of "Where's your pass?" because she pushed me to the floor. I mean, that was the inspiration. You were you weren't letting her away that easy. <laughs> well. But I didn't really land, lay in a, a hand on her. You know, that's the, you know, like you say, she goes, screw your pass. Yeah. And they cut to the the hallway with me with the claws. And it's, it's one of my favorite scenes in the whole movie, that. Thank you. Uh, I, again, it was, I, you got to realize this was the first nightmare on elm street it was very low budget i mean they had basically no money um yeah but but you treat every sh movie or television show with professionalism i mean you don't you don't act or do stunts any less because because of the budget of the movie i mean that again that's being a professional. <laughs> I, I, I was only talking to my wife before coming on here, and uh, like as I said, Nightmare on Elm Street is my favorite horror movie. It's the first horror movie that I actually ever that I remember ever seeing. Oh. Yeah, I was eleven years of age when I seen it. Oh, okay. I, like I say, is that uh, it? It is appropriately named because I've had fans come up to me and say they've seen that scene and they have nightmares <laughs> from that scene. So, um, like people that have listened to previous episodes of the show will know, um, my parents when I was growing up told me there was only two movies I could never watch. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street was one. Oh. And the, the Exorcist was the other one. And I had seen both of them before I was 12. Yeah, that that could have been a little too young, but... Uh, oh, it was I, definitely too young. Nowadays, movies are, are just blood and guts and whatever. I mean, actually, the, uh, I went to the screening or the premiere, whatever you want to call it, of, of the movie... And I didn't realize how much blood was used in the movie. You know, I like mean, Johnny Depp gets sucked into the bed, and and then all this blood just. Well, they they filmed the scene upside down, so yeah. that's why you see this just fountain of blood coming out of the bed. I mean, the creative mind of the legend that is Wes Craven uh, could uh, it could have only been him to come up with something like that oh yeah well again we're talking about well it, it came to the theater in 1984 uh, I really don't remember if we filmed it in 1983 and it took that long to edit it and then it got released in 19, 1984 or if we filmed it in the beginning of 1984 and it was released, I don't think it was released until November of 1984. Yeah, it, was so it was close to Christmas. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Well, uh, that, that, it, it was released, I think, that Christmas period. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> Official release date was November 15th, 1985. 85? That's, sorry. Sorry, that's for Ireland. Um, so November 15, 1984 in the States. We got oh, it a okay. year later. Yeah. Yes. But like I I'll always remember. So I snuck down the stairs of my parents' house at 11 to watch it. And I remember watching it sitting there on, a, on an old TV and it was grainy. It was dark. And 
the the scene that I, I was always iconic to me and still is probably my favorite scene in the whole movie uh, is the scene you know when Robert's in the alleyway and the two arms come out. You know that actually was Tony Caesar. That was the stunt coordinator. That wasn't uh, Robert Englund. Well, yeah, with the um, it looks like they're now when you watch it, it looks like they were on co hangers or something. But um, uh, it's I still love the scene so much. It's my favorite scene in the whole movie. Oh yeah, um, no, it's, uh, the the eighties. I think. Well, I happen to like really old movies, silent films and black and whites and things like that. But I think the 80s was the golden year for horror films. I, I would very much agree. Um, and we have a back catalog, on our back catalog, we have a top 10 um, films from the 80s that could have easily been 50. Uh-huh. Yeah, like one of my one of my favorite movies was 1984 is the mute later um i don't know whether you've ever seen it the mute later is that an american film yeah it was made in um... i'll have to look it up <laughs> yeah it's on, it's on shutter if it's any good to you and um, it was it was directed by buddy cooper it's so good but yes i i'd highly agree with you that the 80s was was the best for for horror um, we're seeing quite a big resurgence in the last few years, though. Well, I I had another fan recently tell me that even the newer horror films just don't compare to the horror films of the 80s. Now, I don't know if that's a true statement or not, but that's their opinion. I mean, I would strongly agree, but only because a lot of the stuff we're seeing now has been done in some way shape or form beforehand in in say the 80s you know that kind of way or there's the remakes and we know what's going to happen true i mean i guess in the 80s when things happen it it was basically original to the audience so it was scarier Absolutely, and I think uh, there was a difference really in the in the mindset of people in the eighties, uh, and when they're watching movies like Nightmare on Elm Street, scared a whole generation of people, um, because nothing like this had ever been seen before. Right, right. Um, obviously, Wes Craven was just an exceptional character developer creator. An all-round director. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know what it was like working alongside someone of that stature in 1984. He would have been villainized for some of his movies. Maybe The Last House on the Left. Um, I Spit in Your Grave probably didn't help the situation with certain people. But to come out with it with a gem like this was just... Um off the charts well i gotta say for me for all the movies and television shows i've done wes craven actually was the nicest director that i ever worked for you would think that uh you know star trek or 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 any of the comedies you might have a really nice director no wes wes was absolutely the nicest director to work for i actually worked for him on deadly friend and then i worked for him on scream 2. now so there like that's the next bit i was going to bring into obviously i was going to say you worked with wes on 1984 obviously nightmare on elm street and then you went on and, and worked a couple of more times with him and um, so he obviously trusted you to come in and do a job um, well, that's exactly it, is that uh, I think this is a stunt person kind of thing, is we want to know, we want to be a one-take artist. We don't want to do a stunt ten times. I mean, we want to get it right the first time. And 
maybe that's what Wes saw in me that, uh, you know, he came up to me and he said, okay, uh, she's going to push you to the ground. You're going to say, where's your past? You know, and and say it was, I mean, he did give me some direction. I mean, you know, he, he said whatever that that you you know you're obviously angry and i want you to really say where's your past and then and then the funniest thing was when we did the hallway scene um he comes up to me i swear he was gonna cry he he's going leslie i just want to let you know I need you to say, hey, Nancy, no running in the hallway and then do a sinister laugh, you know, wiggle, wiggle your, your claws. But I'm telling you now, your voice is not going to be in the movie because the actor is going to dub in that line. And like <laughs> I say, I, I swear that he almost was crying. Like, like he was taking something away from me. And again, I'm a stunt woman. I mean, I'm a stunt woman actress, but I'm a stunt woman. To, to be told that my voice isn't going to make it onto the screen, at least for that one sentence, it, it, it didn't bother me. I, maybe that's on him being respectful to you, but didn't want you to feel bad about it. Or, or, or something along them lines like only only he could tell you why he was like that and we're not going to get an answer unfortunately for that yeah no it was it was kind of interesting because years later i was at a convention i i didn't meet uh robert england until i was at a convention and oh. i explained to him that i was the hall guard and and you know his voice came out of my mouth and he was telling me that he was in new york city at that time and they took him to this really dingy uh rec recording studio and and uh the headset was made out of leather it was it didn't even have any cushioning to speak of <laughs> and uh so he definitely saw me <laughs> before before uh we actually met at the convention because you know what when you dub um they run that scene and he has to say the words to uh, match it up to match my mouth moving i mean i can't I mean... this isn't this isn't a japanese movie where i go Where's your, or, hey Nancy, no running in the hallway. Yeah. You know, he, he has to, he has to time it perfectly, which, which he did. Nailed it. Um, for me, I met, well, I didn't meet, I seen, so at 14 or 15, I was in an airport in London and I seen Robert walking by and I got too starstruck that I couldn't even go up and say hello. I haven't, I haven't gotten the air even try to get an autograph or anything since like it, it the movie is, as i said it's it's my favorite movie like i have i've got a nightmare on elm street tattoo wait which way am i going on the way well I, well I can see the glove is there there's a shine on it is there uh well you i can kind see of make the face it of the glove but i really couldn't see the the, the head part of it Oh, oh, okay. Now I see it. Yes. Yeah, that goes apart. I think, but like, to for me to talk to someone that's worked with a genius like Wes Craven um, is phenomenal. And obviously, you've done three movies with him, or did yeah, three movies. What was it like to be part of? Obviously, you're part of one of the biggest horror franchises in Nightmare on Elm Street, but to be part of another huge franchise in Scream. Obviously, you were part of Scream Two. Yes, Scream Two. I I swear, <laughs> I swear that that Wes was trying to kill me in Scream Two. 
you know, I got hit in the head with a beer bottle, and then basically the whole theater starts falling on top of me. You know, I had to jump out of the way of a pillar, and then the stage lights are coming down on me, and I start climbing up that wall, and the wall gives way, and uh, those were styrofoam blocks, actually. And, and I mean, I was buried. They, ha they had to dig me out of those styrofoam blocks. I mean, I was, I, I don't know if I was actually, I probably was laying on the floor, but there were just so many blocks on me that when they yelled cut, it wasn't like I could just go and move the blocks aside. They, they had to come on the stage and unbury me. So that's obviously the scene you're referring to there is the fight between Mickey, Cindy, and Billy's mom. Correct. At the end of two. I'm, I'm doubling Laurie Metcalf. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah it's, uh, Debbie Salt. Yeah. Um, and, and, and then I had a knife and I stabbed it into one of those styrofoam blocks. And, uh, oh, it, it, it was a fun, it actually was a fun day, but I, I swear that Wes just wanted to see my limits. He, I, I like to say he threw everything at me except the kitchen sink. <laughs> he might, he might have tried to do that as well. <laughs> Obviously, you've, you've made it into two of the biggest. Um, what some people would refer to as as two of the big five horror franchises, obviously both made by by the late great Wes Craven, but you're you're also known for uh, a different kind of world now. I know this is a horror show, but um, it'd be a miss to not bring up your roles in Star Trek. Yes, I. I mean, I guess because I did so many episodes. Uh, I was on Deep Space Nine and Voyager, and I doubled Bolana Torres, the half Klingon, half human. And uh, the stunt coordinator is Dennis Madalone. And again, this is someone that knows my skill, my capability, and especially on Voyager, uh, Bolana was able to fight with men. It's really strange. People don't realize this, but uh, even in the 80s, they felt, somebody felt, that women, human women, could not fight human men or aliens. They could hit them with a pipe, they could shoot them, uh, they could butt them with a gun but they could not throw a punch at them. And uh, if you watch uh, the episode called uh, Day of Honor, uh, that actually is a hunt, that fight is 100% myself and stuntman, stuntman Tom Morga. And uh, what, what happened was Roxanne Dawson was pregnant at that point. I mean, she wasn't showing, but she was pregnant and they didn't want to do any inner cuts. So the cameraman was wearing what you call a steady cam, and he's filming the fight. Uh, you know, you, you see her getting hit with the pain sticks. Then uh, you see me getting hit with maybe like the last pain stick and I start the fight with Tom and and it's like I say it's a hundred percent myself and Tom uh, I knock him to the ground and the camera is on him I step out of the scene Roxanne steps in the camera swings around and here's Roxanne. And she says something like, uh, you know, I don't think I'm going to do this. So there is there is no cuts in that fight scene. I mean, that that shows the, the great work 
that obviously you do, the cameraman does, uh, um, uh, obviously Tom Margaret, who I've mentioned that you've been in two of the, the, the five big five. He was in one of the big five in, uh, obviously in Halloween. Tom got himself into Halloween, which yeah. was, yeah, Halloween, yeah, which is one of the big five. So there's three of the big five covered between the two of you doing a, a fight on Star Trek. Right. Well, actually, Tom Morga, Dennis Madelone, myself, and several other stuntmen, we all started out at the same time at this gym in Santa Monica, which is right now. I mean, Los Angeles is a blob, and, and Santa Monica is part of Los Angeles. And every Saturday, these would-be stunt people would go to the gym and we would practice high falls and fights and we would put a scene together and and show each other a scene and uh i've remained friends with tom since the 70s well dennis and tom since the 70s and tom has been in halloween um Friday the 13th. Uh, oh, I, forgot, I forgot he was in. Massacre. So yeah, he's in tr the other three of the big five. Oops. I'm, I'm so sorry. you're in two. I, I forgot that he was in Texas Chainsaw and Friday the 13th. Yeah, actually, I, I'm sorry I don't have it in front of me because I actually came up with a one through five on Tom Morga. He was in a movie called First Power. Then I don't know which movie was the second, you know, something the second. Uh, he was in something the third. Uh, like He's I said, I, I wish I had it in front of me, but, but you can count up to five. He also was in uh, one of the Chucky movies. So... I actually seen him in person last year in oh. Manchester at For the Love of Horror. They done the the Michael Myers um, collection. Yeah, and then uh, and then, uh, uh, Tom and I are are very good friends with Dick Warlock. So it's really what funny. a man. I mean, we used to, the three of us are actually Dick's wife, Kat, also. The four of us, we, we used to have breakfast uh, together on the weekend. Oh, nice. And we all that's, lived in Los Angeles. That's a, that's, that's a hell of a friendship to have. A <laughs> hell of a little group of friends to have. Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and the thing is, we don't, we don't think of us as Jason or Michael Myers or or the Hall Guard. I mean we're we're just and and sitting in a restaurant. Uh I mean obviously the two of them aren't dressed up as Jason or Michael Myers and and I don't have my hair in a ponytail, so you know, we're just seated at a table eating breakfast just, together just a, just a group of people yeah yeah that, that, a group of people that have done some gnarly stuff to people <laughs> <laughs> right yeah okay uh, people knew who now, we were they probably sit a little farther away from us <laughs> i will say i'm not a star trek fan myself um i never got into it but i know the love that it has so it must be incredible to have been a part of that. Well, I'm, I got to admit, I'm an original Trekkie. I mean, I grew up on, well, when it was called Star Trek, because no one called it Star Trek, the original series, which is now what pe people will say TOS, the original series. It was Star Trek. <laughs> there was only the one at that stage. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, like you say, I was a Trekkie. I was a Trekkie when the word Trekkie was a bad word to say. People decided that we should be Trekkers, not Trekkies. 
now nowadays you can say trekker trekkie and and it's acceptable uh but uh i went to this is actually the second star trek convention in 1973 i live in northern new york and i took a bus down to new york city and went to the second convention for star trek and it was really star trek that uh, I feel started these kind of conventions. Well, I mean, you as I says, I've mentioned it a couple of times now. You were involved in Nightmare on Elm Street, huge franchise. You're involved in Scream, huge franchise. You're involved in arguably one of the biggest TV shows ever made in Star Trek. Like, even if you did nothing else other than those, that's a hell of a run. Yeah, yeah, and. And of course, you uh, you got to star, or you got to be involved in uh, one of both mine and Ted's, uh, one of the other co-hosts. You know, he's he's a huge Scream fan. Uh, he's raging; he couldn't be here tonight. Um, but also, in one of his favorite franchises, in The Naked Gun. I w- I was going to bring that up. Is that uh, yes? I was Queen Elizabeth going down the banquet table with <laughs> legs up in the air. <laughs> I love Naked Gun. I love it. I'm not looking forward to the remake, really, that's coming out later on in the year. Um, I think Leslie Nielsen was just uh, a genius. Yeah. Well, um, I, and two things about Naked Gun is, uh, you know, all day on the set, they're going, Leslie to the set. Well, they're talking about Leslie Nielsen. But then they get up to the stunt and they go, Leslie to the set. And he comes over, Leslie Nielsen comes over to me and he goes, Leslie, that's a nice sounding name. <laughs> and I didn't <laughs> think of a snappy comeback. I said, all I could think of was, I think so, Leslie. <laughs> you, should, you, should have turned, you should have turned around and was like, yeah, it's a great girl's name and walked off. <laughs> The most interesting thing about, not only was he funny, the most interesting thing about Naked Gun is I worked with Ricardo Montalban on Fantasy Island. And he oh, came wow. up to me and he goes, hello, Leslie. This man remembered me from Fantasy Island. He recognized me. Ricardo Montalban was a movie star in the, I think, 40s and 50s. He was a leading man. And this movie star remembers a lowly stunt woman and says, hello, Leslie. I mean, I was shocked. You know, I, well, I hate, I sort of hate to be so, uh, remorse about or or sad about this is it's it's amazing that well Wes Craven left us way too early he died way that, too young. that was such a shock yeah it was and but Ricardo Montalban is gone Leslie Nielsen is gone I mean all these people that I worked with that I have such wonderful memories with aren't aren't here anymore but but they're on film. They'll always be on film. You'll always see them. On film or behind the camera who obviously gave us so many great memories uh, or things of watching movies from Craven. Um, I wouldn't mind. I only rewatched the scary movie franchise. Um, and obviously Leslie comes into it in the third one. And he's just, he's just brilliant. Um, and like I know, I know, I know, I'm the, the host of a, a horror podcast, and people would be like, "Oh yeah, but it's not horror." But you still have to respect other genres too. Um, and obviously, you've you've ventured your way through a lot of them, um, from horror to sci-fi to comedy, um, and it's been a, an absolute stellar career you've had. Um, I know recently you have decided to go and start the own cons. I. I used to go to them when I was very young, or, or right at the end of my career, I actually started going to conventions. But 
But truthfully, what happened was I got very sick. There was something wrong with me, and I'll, I'll jump right to the end of it. It turned out that the medication the doctors put me on made me sicker. I oh. luckily had a doctor that said, you know, let's try weaning you off of these drugs. And once I was off of the drugs, here I am. Hello. <laughs> still here, still fighting. Yeah. So, so I really am trying my best to get back at on the convention circuit, whether horror or sci-fi. Uh, I have an Instagram page now. Uh, it's, it's actually V underscore Leslie underscore Hoffman. Uh, so, so I'm hoping it's an entertaining page. Uh, the funniest thing is, I guess I'm old enough and young enough that I really don't know how Instagram works and I'm Neither trying to learn my best how to make it work. So that's Neither what I'm saying is I'm old enough that what in the world is Instagram? And I'm young enough that Hey, I'm gonna learn how to make Instagram work. But as I says, it's it's been a, a wonderful chat this evening. Um, we really appreciate you coming on. Um, oh, Bobby, I appreciate you inviting me. Oh, I, I, anything, anything to do with um, Nightmare on Street or anything or any guest that's willing to to give up their time, we're more than happy to have them on. But I'll tell you one thing: it it really is up to the fans to talk to the promoter and say, I want to see the hall guard from Nightmare on Elm Street, or I want to see Leslie Hoffman. I want her at this convention. And then the promoter will try to find out who my agent is, and they will call up James and, and, uh, and book me into a convention. I I really would love to travel across across the ocean, and it, it's been a wonderful chat, and we'll welcome you back absolutely any time. Oh, hey, again, thank you for for even thinking of me and having me on the podcast. Absolutely, as I says, uh, anything Nightmare Down Street. It could have been the guy who cleaned up after the Johnny Depp dead scene, and I'm gonna I'm gonna bring them on. But to have uh, have someone that play, that played such an iconic character role or iconic scene in the movie um, is it, just it's just great for me. So nice to be remembered, even if it is a horror film or or it scares people. It's still nice to be remembered. You're part you're part of that iconic movie. That and in my opinion, it's the movie that saved slasher movies. So. Um, <laughs> congratulations on that, um, and we wish you all the best for the future. And as as hopefully, hopefully, you get booked into a, a fair few cons along the way. Yeah, someday, um, someday we'll meet in person. Someday, someday, soon, soon I hope. <laughs> <laughs> um, but folks, this has been your Friday night, and I'm gonna do this the way I do it every single Friday night. In the words of the great George A. Romero, ladies and gentlemen, stay scared. <laughs>